All right, guys. Talica 16.2A. This is a new release for 2023, and currently they only have it for the 12 and 16 size. So let's do an unboxing on this and take a look at it. A couple of new things on this reel that's different from the previous years, which are new frame body that makes it a little bit lighter and dual disc drags. In the bag, we're gonna see the traditional tools, including the clamps. Now, in the first generation, they gave two lengths of the screws, short and long. Right now, they're saying that the longer is gonna be an optional item. An additional thing that's included is the drag cam. Kind of interesting that they do include one, but I think that's pretty cool. That's it for the tools here. Here's the real, everything that you would expect out of Shimano in design, really nice. A little bit more compact. What we see different right now, the spool is equal length compared to the first iteration, which was kind of like an A-frame design. Here's the Gen 1. You'll see that it's a little bit more shorter in there and then it's taller at the end of this spool. So this is Gen 1. Almost everything is identical. I'm looking at it too, where the two speeds, the buttons are still the same two-speed mechanism. The handle length and width is still the same. Even the knob is the same. There's an additional bearing on this one and about four pounds more drag. And additionally, it's one ounce, almost one ounce lighter than the first generation. They made a new body design and I feel like this is very close to how the Trinidad is. On the front frames, they pushed it outwards keeps this streamlined so you're able to have a smaller side plate overall diameter on this. And that just gives you a little bit more comfort in holding it. If you look at the Gen 1, it's just unison all the way and one bigger overall side frame on this. Looking at diameters, it was 72.3 on Gen 1, 69.5 on Gen 2. So they did keep it smaller overall. Let's take a look at the dry side. It's about 73.6 on this one and 78.5. So you can see how much material has came off by factory specs of no line. You're about one ounce heavier on this. Looking at it overall, we see cutouts on the handle, a little bit more beveled edges along the two-speed housing, while this one is just more of a block frame. So they did shave off wherever they could. The lever, you do have the groove slots on push side and now on the free spool side. And one new thing about that spool as well, we now have a post that you're able to tie your braid onto. So you no longer need to have mono backing or all that tape that you would do with all your braid. So let's take a look at the inside of this. I have a few tools here, Torx 10, that would be for my main screws, the T8 sizes, and that will be for the handle. So let's start dissecting this. Shut off. With the drag system, that was very audible. That's nice. Oh, got it. So it used to have one single, um, kind of like a, a push pin on this. This one has two sides of it, kind of nice. It makes it uh, really audible feedback, kind of gives it a little bit more pressure so you're, it doesn't roll off so easily. If it... Let's take a look at that. This is just like how Gen 1 is. So off the bat, we're seeing a housing for our drag system. This is the plate and the disc. That's what we saw in Gen 1 as well. Diameter does look a little bit smaller already off the bat. I'm just going to go by based on what I recall. Gear side, this looks exactly how I would recall the Talica Gen 1 looks like. It has um, post covers for your dogs and it is dual dogs. And both of them are in sync, which means that they both lock at the same time, while other brands we may have seen from other videos, they are alternating. So it looks very identical to the previous generation. Let's take it all apart here as well. And to remove this, I'm just gonna lift all of it together equally. Pulse came off with it, that's okay. 
do the post. This is a pinion gear. This should all come off. Pinion gear right here. So this is a T8. There we go. This is exactly identical to how I would find Gen 1. And same thing with this plate. So what we see here is the cover, uh, one bushing, and here's a bearing right here. This is your main gear. This is your low gear. You guys see a noticeable difference already. The main and low gear in Gen 1 were equal millimeters width. And look at this one right now. Four millimeter. 2.8. You lost like 1.2 millimeter in the process right here. Um, it went down a uh, size. That's kind of interesting. The two speed entire mechanism looks identical so nothing really changed i know that how it would work is this uh, push pin when you're the button when you're pushing it this locks it down in place and it will move this kind of like this t-bar it'll push it up into the next gear to lock that and it'll lock it right here to turn this one so it goes into the slots and that goes for the low gear and when you release it, it pushes it back down. And there's a spring that pushes this T back down as well. So there's springs in here. If you see if I'm lifting, it's by compression. And it'll push it back down. And that's in its regular position right now. Pinion bearing. Instantly, what I'm seeing is a cover plate. That's cool. I'm curious if that helps with the pressure when you're pushing on that bearing there, you know, like all that load. It's just a simple plate cover. Hmm, look at this. It's open faced and the open face is on the outside. Liquids would be able to get in on there just a little bit. So you want to put some grease around this. That's just area of entrance. Just looking at the overall design. I also, uh, what I'm noticing right now is Gen 1 actually has like a, a little raised lip on the outside of these. And then on the frame, it's recessed ever so slightly. So that way it cups over it. That's Gen 1. Let's take a look at this side. Look at this, uh, your clicker plastic housing. Usually is it like a, like almost like a copper material. Let's listen to that real quick. Still very audible, so no big deal. And those are easily replaceable parts. In Gen 1, uh, which I'm seeing here as well, these are my screws to attach the gear side onto it. And if you see, there's a slot right below on every single one of those. And what that does is if you put grease on those screws and it gets packed as you're tightening it down grease that's trapped inside of that can't be removed but this recess allows it to flow all the excess out of it it prevents it from splitting kind of nice to have like one little detail nice machining just like that one is i could see that they recessed everything as much as they could to keep it very low in there i could see why all that weight reduction while still keeping the strength of it very amazing dual drag let's see what that is all about we're gonna need to go back ph Zero is what we're going to use. So here's one of the drag disc on this side and I see a bearing there and I'm seeing another bearing right under there as well. So I believe that's where the additional bearing comes from. One more bearing versus that one. Let's lift off this disc and I'm going to use 532.
and this is my disc. And you can see now the other cross carbon drag on the inside of that. That carbon fiber cross drag, uh, there's a lot of excess. Can you see that there's a lot of excess material there? On both sides, like little small tiny fibers. The housing has the most tiniest O-ring and that's to keep the water from going in. Water intrusion on this one. Take a look at that. Single bearing right there. Bearing, bearing, and here, a spool bearing right there. Let's take a look at this side of the spool and that will be pH one. housing cover and here it is one bearing still in there spool shaft has this o-ring and that is for this side there you go it creates a seal so actually with that open face a bearing the pinion bearing it's should be ideally protected one spool bearing over here I, i'm not seeing the um what i would say what is a uh, the thrust bearing, this is just another spool bearing and these are usually sealed on this side. These are usually shielded, but let's take this all the way out. Oh yeah, it has a circlet there. Well, this one, I mean, man, if you, the real truth about this is because this is a spool bearing, it's not rolling at all. This should be open face, remove the grease and just TSI oil. Um, when I tested it, spool wasn't great, and I could feel that. That's from this right now. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what it's packed with. So I just got myself a little hook. Sir clip off. Yeah, it's all grease in there. Yeah, if we could take all that out, remove this with a solvent, we'll get way better free spool right now out of this. That'll be on the next on the list. Let's take a look here. We got everything almost taken apart, right? Let's take a look at this bearing. Uh, one shield if you don't know this is bearing bad ernie hooked it up with this okay so this is the one that is um fully shielded i can't remove these these are from shimano and they're just they are what they are i'm gonna do a speed up of this one so all right, so I got the drivetrain side of Talica 1 right here. Seeing double dogs right here with the post covers on them. Take a look if they are both in sync. Now, same thing we're seeing is the helical cuts. Very, very slight helical, not like a, a, a real hard angle. From right here, what I'm looking at, I'm seeing that the low gear is definitely equal to the main gear in the width not not this one right here this is you can see it right now right that's versus look at this yeah we lost some millimeters guys on the low gear for gen 2 that kind of sucks so you do get much more lighter weight at the sacrifice of this gear too because this gear is i mean i don't think anyone has ever had a problem with this brass gear but you losing a whole millimeter you know that's the difference even you know, even though it's helical why do we like the ideas of like the visx the makaira the torque the fathom even with stainless steel gears because we know that it's going to be solid but you know having these uh bronze or brass and and thinner that's interesting right and we're talking about the raised lip if you can see ever so slightly there's a recess right here all around and how it's dimpled on this side it's grooved that cups it so you kind of have your own sealant right here you just apply the thinnest layer of grease all around this when you close it you now have your own personal seal okay so I, I was saying it was copper i'm thinking of another model stainless steel springs for the clicker right here and when i was saying copper let me see if i could find out this would be a pen torque and that's where we see copper so gen 2 gen 1 let me put it here we go 
no recess on this, it's just flat, which is, it doesn't hurt. I mean, all you do is just put a thin film on this as well. And when you close it up, you still got a good seal. But taking a look between the two, you can see the diameter already. Much bigger on this. So they took a lot of care in how they designed this in their 3D to make sure that all the cutouts was possible to reduce the weight. And let's take a look at the drags. We know that these two are from Gen 2 right here, and this is Gen 1. And like I was mentioning that the diameter of this overall, I knew it was bigger than what I remembered for these. So here's the drag disc. Now, when you look at it, all this excess, that's not used. It's the inner part of it where you can see the disc color. Same thing with this. The center part of it is unused where the screws are. It's the outer of it. And let me measure those diameters for you. Approximately 47, almost 7.6. So both sides dual drag. And will diameter make a difference? It's just like overall runtime length of it. 56.8, 9.1 is what I'm reading right here. The reason I was explaining bigger diameter versus a smaller diameter, I'm thinking of it like disc brakes on a vehicle. Now you can have really high quality brake pads on smaller rotors. It heats up overall a lot quicker. So longer duration runs, it's going to heat up when it's smaller, even though it has good stopping power. While bigger diameter, bigger surface, there's a lot more cooling. So you're able to do the same braking over longer periods of time without having it warp. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that, but that's a good analysis of what I'm seeing here. It's Gen 1 versus Gen 2. We know that this was, this Gen 1 was introduced in... 2010 i think it was 2010 so we're talking about now solid 12 years that we had the gen 1 we haven't had an update since so we know that with this gen 2 we're gonna see this for the next 10 years easily even with this thin low gear and smaller drags but you get dual of these man i i, I wouldn't know where to begin i mean obviously everyone always goes for new new came with a little bit of shrinking everything down we did have to reduce the weight but at what expense? Um, is it a good expense? Because these guys are engineers. I, I'm not an engineer. I know that they put hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to make sure that this was designed correctly. But I'm seeing this thinner low gear like, what the heck, man? I like my stainless gears. Pen torque right here. Stainless steel, you know. You know what? Still thicker than the low gear. This is its low gear for the pen torque. I'll give you a diameter right now just so you can see. 3.7, so we do compromise a bit. I'm about to put it all back together. I don't think you need to see it back together, but you put your thoughts on what you think of Italica 2 Gen 2. Got a whole bunch of real parts now. So I filmed that part of the video back in January of this year and was so dumbfounded from that low gear I ended up exchanging the TAC-16 for a TAC-12. Felt that I could fish it lighter. It's October 2nd today and I have a Talica 25-2A I'll still need to edit. I haven't had a chance to hang one on any of these new models yet, but I still kept my Gen 1s, that's the 12 and the 16, and I just added a 20 earlier this summer. Let's talk about some of the updates on this TAC-16. Weight is a primary one. We lose almost a full ounce compared to the Gen 2 from the new body design. Additionally, we gain more drag at 44 pounds with the help of the new dual drags. I believe this also helps alleviate pressure from the gear side that makes it much more smoother on the wine and the reason I'll be using this TAC-12 2A for my jigging reel. Now with the loss of weight and more drag, we did have to spare some expenses at a thinner profiled low gear. As noted, we know the designers and engineers have done their R&D, so my goal is to use these tools as designed and hope to land big game. Hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching.